Welcome everyone to this webinar. We have been running a series of webinars and in today's session, we'll be looking at designing field plugins. But before we, we get into the details of the webinar, just a few housekeeping matters. The first one is that we are recording this webinar. If you miss any part, we will uh, produce a video in the coming days and the video will also be available in our video library on our website so you can reference some of the material that we have here we record in the webinar secondly we also have a poll running if you can take some time to just quickly answer the questions that we have in that poll we just have three questions i think it will be helpful for us just to understand a little bit more about how it can be more relevant especially in relation to field plugins as an organization those are basic uh, housekeeping matters that i wanted to bring out and we'll, we'll get right into it at the end we will have a question and answer session and so as we go along if you have any question that uh, you need answered you can type it in the q and a box so you have a chat box and you've got the Q and A box. Preferably, would like for you to type your questions into the Q and A box so that it's easy for us to keep track of them. But you can start typing those as we go along so that you don't forget your question. And during the Q and A session, we will get to all of them. So we'll get started with the webinar, and I trust that you will all benefit from it. So as I mentioned, my name is Mofia Piri, part of the customer success team at Doability. I'll be the one facilitating this webinar. I have a colleague of mine who will also be helping me out background, who is Mata. We, we hope you enjoy this particular webinar. So we'll be looking at uh, designing field, field plugins, and uh, this is the overview of what we'll look at today. We will ask ourselves, uh, what is a field plugin? And then we will try to understand what the field plugin can do. We'll look at some examples and then we'll get into the components uh, that a field plugin has. Then we'll get into a demo actually showing us how to go about creating a new field plugin. Then we'll point you to some useful resources and then we can get into a time of question answer. So we'll go straight into it. And the first question we'll ask ourselves is what is field plugin? So field plugin is an extension of existing functionality. Uh, so when you use server CTO, we have a number of fields that you use as you develop your forms. What a field plugin does is it extends the functionality of those particular fields. It does this by giving the field an appearance of a mini web page. So it will work like a mini web page within a server CTO collect. And because it's working as a mini web page, we can then take advantage of web related resources such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to extend the functionality of that particular field. The fields that are currently be supported for field plugins, text, integer, decimal, select one, and select multiple. So you can use a field plugin on any of these particular fields. So that's a few, what a field plugin is. What is it that I can do with a field plugin? What can you do with a field plugin? There are a number of things that you can do. Firstly, you can customize the appearance of a field. So you're working on a field and you want to change the color of the field, the size of the field, or where the elements are placed. Uh, so you can do that with a field plugin. You can customize existing functionality. Remember, we said it extends the functionality of those fields. So you can change the field to add timers, make phone calls and so on and so forth. You can also create completely new input modes. So fields, if you've got a text field, it allows you to input text into it, but you can modify how that field works to be able to use things like counters or even to have clickable images. You can also use field plugins to integrate with web services such as YouTube, Twilio or Exotel. These are some of the web services that we develop field plugins that work with them. What are some examples of field plugins? You said you can extend the functionality. We've already been doing this. And so here are some examples of field plugins that we've created so far. Uh, one is phone call. Field plugin came in really handy and is very useful for CATI data collection. It's something that a number of you, I trust, must have encountered at some point. But basically, this particular field plugin allows you to make a phone call. You can call a certain number, or you can also hide that phone number so that a person can see it but the call will be made so you can see in that picture that we have here that the field looks completely different the appearance of this field has been changed but in the background this is really working on top of text field another example that i wanted to highlight is uh, time choices so we've got a field plugin that allows us to put 
time limits to a particular field. And so you can see something that's familiar below there. It just looks like select one field, but it's got a timer that's working on it. And so you can use this timer to enforce the limit, amount of time that you can spend on this field. Uh, you can use the field plugin to make it auto advance when the time runs out. Uh, you can use the field plugin to disallow changes uh, when the time runs out, but you can also customize how that timer looks like. Right now it says five seconds. You can change that to count in milliseconds and so on and so forth. The theme here is that we're able to change the functionality of a normal field. Another example is our timed grid test field plugin. This gives us complex grid presentation of elements. So uh, the elements are presented in a grid and they are selectable. So you can pick them by clicking on the different elements. As you change different tests that you are doing within this particular field plugin, it will give you a different view. Uh, right now it's got nice rows that are numbered, but you can have uh, rows that are not numbered also. And then the number of rows also adjust depending on the screen size. So if your screen can fit 10 rows, the plugin will automatically fits 10 rows within that screen. If your screen is smaller, it will fit a lower number. It also has a timer. Uh, this particular field plugin works for exercises such as the early grade reading assessment. So it's able to facilitate those kinds of assessments. So we've looked at examples of field plugins. So then we're going to say what exactly is a field plugin composed of. And so we look at the components of a field plugin. So primarily the field plugin has got four files. The first file is the HTML template. The HTML template is what we use to define the basic structure and layout of the elements. Where is my input box going to be? Where is my text going to be? We use the HTML template to define those particular places. And this file must be called template.html. Then secondly, we've got CSS, which you use for styling. CSS is also called cascading style sheet for those that are not familiar with it. You use that to style and give looks and appearance to your particular elements. This file called style.css, that's part of the field plugin components that you use for styling. And then you have got JavaScript code. With the JavaScript code, you're able to manage the behavior, the behavior of the field plugin you can capture some data, process it, and then change how the field plugin actually executes. The main file is called the script.js. And then you've got the JSON manifest, uh, which is really just metadata about the field plugin. And you can include a number of things here, including extra CSS files. This must be called manifest.json. So our components here are an HTML template called template.html, a CSS file called style.css, a JavaScript file called script.js and a manifest file called manifest.json. So those four files combined together allow you to manipulate how a field plugin is actually going to look and how it's going to work. That's a high level information about the field plugin. We will now go into a demo, which I think will be useful for us to be able to see how actually you can work with these files that we have talked about. In our demo, what we are going to do is we're going to work with an existing field and then we'll be able to manipulate that to be able to show how we change the field plugin and how the field plugin actually works. So our starting point is a simple form definition in Excel. This is just a hypothetical to try and demonstrate how these different components come together. So in this hypothetical, we have a decimal field by usually by default, you want to collect some information. Let's say you want to collect an amount of money or something like that. You define that in a decimal field, you will give it a label, which is enter amount. And usually you use a hint to determine what currency that amount should be in. And you can upload this to your server. And uh, when you open that form, this is the one that I've uploaded here. If I try to look at this form and see how that field looks like, it will look something like this. Okay, so there's my label, there's my hint, and is my input field. Say we want to develop a field plugin that changes how this works. I don't want to put my currency in the hint. I want for my currency to appear by the side of my input field, because normally that, that's how these things would look like. What can I do to get to that particular point? The first step is I would go ahead and pick up a baseline field plugin. I'd go into our support center and I would look for our field plugin catalog. 
in our field plugin catalog, that's where we have a list of all the field plugins that we have developed that you can reuse at your own time. So I'd come into our support center, I'd pick up our catalog, and I would go down to my baseline field plugins. So our baseline field plugins are field plugins that act as templates, which developers have developed to give us a head start in terms of the information or the functionality of a particular field. You will notice that we have a baseline field plugin for all our fields that currently supported. And in this case, we are working with a decimal field. So I will go ahead and download the file for our baseline decimal field. Okay, I will download the this and save it in my webinar folder. So once I download my baseline field, one thing that would be good for us to be able to see is to see what difference does this make in terms of appearance. So what I will do is I will go into my form and I will remove this hint for now and I will make this work uh, with the field plugin. I haven't made any changes to the field plugin, but I want this to work with the field plugin. And to do that, I'll put in my appearance custom dash the name of the field plugin, baseline dash decimal. So what have we done here? We're basically linking this particular field to the field plugin. And then I will obviously save this and then upload it to my server. So I'll go back into my server. I will click on upload and I will upload my form. And I will also upload my field plugin as an attachment. So I believe some of you might be familiar with how we attach field, field plugins to a form. I've got that. And when I now open this field, okay, nothing has changed. But what the only difference is that in the background, this is actually using a field plugin to manage this particular field. The next thing I would do then is I will begin to change how the field plugin interacts with this field. And to do this, I will, or I will need to open a text editor. You can use your favorite text editor. I normally use Visual Studio Code. And I will open that folder uh, for my field plugin. The first thing I'll need to do is I will need to unzip it so that I can edit the files that are in there. Okay, and I'll come here and now I will open uh, my folder. Okay, so that's in a code webinar, this line, select that folder. And when I open this folder, I will be able to see those four files that, that were in there. There's the manifest.json, there's my script.js, my style.css, and my template.html. So I'm trying, my goal is to have some symbol this side to represent the currency of this particular field. How do I do that? The first thing I do, obviously, is to add to the structure of this. And to add to the structure, we said the HTML template file is the one that handles the structure. So I will go into my HTML template. You find there are already other things in here. And uh, when you look closely at these, uh, you'll be able to relate them to some of the things that you see in the form definition. I've got a label column here and I've got a label here. So basically this pulls in what is going to be put in that label column. Media image, you'll find that if you've got media and you're adding images, this will present those images somewhere. Same for audio, same for video. So there's some familiar things going on uh, within this particular template. To make my change, this is my input field. Those who are not familiar with HTML, there are different types of input and you can specify what type of input it is here. So this is a text input that receives numbers and it has an input mode of decimal. This tells it how to present this particular field. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a label for this particular field. Now I have already written some code. So I'll just paste my code here and I'll explain it slightly. So a label is a type of HTML that displays text. Uh, you can give that label an ID. Uh, so I've given it an ID symbol, which is a name that allows me to refer to it later. And I'm saying this is a symbol for the field code. Uh, this is a label for the field code decimal field, uh, which is my field here below. And I've given this label some value already, which is a dollar symbol. One of the things that we have worked hard to do to simplify how field plugins work is to be able to have a preview within the test environment. 
if you're on a field that uses a plugin and you look to the left, you will see some arrows here. And if you click on those arrows, they'll give you information about this particular field plugin. Got that information. Uh, the HTML is that HTML file. The CSS is that CSS file. The JS is that JS file. And so you can quickly check the changes that you're making. This information is coming from the manifest file. So what we'll do here then is uh, we have made changes to our HTML file. And what we have done is we've added this label. So I've just copied all of this and I'm now pasting it into my file. So I'll place all of this, I'll paste this here, and then I can click reload. Okay, so when I reload my field, I have my dollar sign showing up here, but I don't want it to show up there. I want it to show up by the side. So I'll ask myself the question, why is it showing up there? And so I'll come back into my code, and then I will ask which file deals with uh, the appearance and the styling of this particular field. That's my style.css. How is my style.css related to the way my input field looks like? Those that are not familiar, uh, the way you relate your style is using what's called a class tag. And so the classes that are in here uh, relate this particular input field uh, with a style sheet. I can see that here I'm using a class called response. And if I go into here and I look for a class called response, I will see that one of the things is that my response class has a width of 100%. So it's covering the entire width of the container. Let's say, because I want it to leave room for my symbol, I will reduce this to, let's say, 80%. I will select all of this. I will copy it. I will go back into my previewer, and I can come here and replace my CSS. Just replace everything, and then I will try to go ahead and reload this. When I reload this, I am quite happy. I've got my dollar symbol at the front there. So we are making progress, and I think we're getting closer to what we want. But it's possible that I may want to say, I want this symbol to be a bit more pronounced. So maybe I should make it bold, different from the text that will be entered here. How would I do something like that? Okay. Uh, so bold, again, is something that has to do with appearance. I probably need to work in the CSS file. I'll come in the CSS file, and I can create a new class, which I can just call symbol. And then I'll give this a font weight of bold. Uh, there's my font weight of bold. And now I will need to link this bold to my label. And so in my label, I will need to tell it that use the class that is called symbol. A class symbol, I think I've done all the changes. I will copy my HTML code because this has changed. I will come here and I will paste it in my HTML code. I will come back here again because the style has also changed because I've added this new class. I'll also copy this. I can come back into my previewer and I can paste this here. Once I've done that, I can click on reload. And when I click reload, we can see now that our symbol is bold. We are already modifying an existing plugin that was just displaying a decimal field to now have a special symbol with it. But usually these symbols are going to be different. If I'm working in a certain area, the currency might be the dollar. If I go to another place, I would like to be able to change that currency to something else. And remember we said when we are dealing with behavior, we would then have to work in the JavaScript file. So we'll go to the JavaScript file so that it gives us uh, some dynamic working. Uh, but the first thing I would like to do here is right now my symbol is static. I've just put a dollar sign there. I want this to be a dynamic symbol. So I will remove this particular one and I will say my JavaScript file is the one that's going to pass the value that I want in terms of the symbol. We're moving forward. Hopefully everybody is able to follow. Again, I've got some JavaScript text here that I'm going to paste here. I've already typed this, but I'll explain what's happening here. I've got a symbol here. My symbol is just a dollar sign, and I'm putting it in a variable called symbol to use. This is the symbol that I'm going to be using. And then I've got a variable here that says, where should I place this symbol? And basically I'm saying it should be placed in the item or the element that is called symbol. So if we go into our template.html, uh, the element that has got an ID or is named symbol is this label. So we are saying symbol place is going to represent this particular element. And then I have here this line that says 
in that simple place or this element, I should give it some text. And the text I should give it is the text that is in the variable called symbol to use. So basically saying I should get this symbol and I should put it in this particular text. So that's using JavaScript language to actually say, to actually say that. So I have made some changes to my template by doing what? By remove the hard-coded figure here. And then I have made some changes to my script by adding these lines here to pass the value to the template. If I go right ahead and copy all of these, and I come back here, so change my HTML. So I will come here, paste this into my HTML, and then I will come back to my text editor. I've changed my JavaScript. I will copy all of this. And then I will come back here and I will now go down to my JavaScript box and then I will paste my JavaScript there and I will try and reload this page. And when I reload this, nothing has changed. But in the background, in our code, something has changed. The value now is coming from the JavaScript, not straight from the HTML itself. One more step. Normally, I don't want to always come and change the code here to pass this particular value. I would rather give that value to my form and then my form will pass this value to the plugin and I will use that. So we normally call a way of passing information as a parameter. What we'll do is we've got a method that, pass, that picks up parameters. So I can use a method get plugin parameter and it should get a parameter named symbol. Whatever symbol is passed as a parameter will be stored in here and that's what's going to be displayed here. That's a good start, but where am I going to pass this particular parameter? I'm going to pass the parameter to my form. Right now, instead of just having that information, I'm going to add information that relates to a parameter. The symbol is equal to a dollar, and I close that. Okay, so I can save this. What I will need to do is make a change here because I've added this line, so I will copy all of this. I will come back here, and then I will paste it there. And when I reload this field, it doesn't show me a parameter right now because I have not passed any parameter. I have not passed any parameter to it yet. So what do I do to pass the parameter? I have to update my form. I've already added my parameter there, save this, and then I will come here and I will update my form. Form, clicking on upload. My form has been uploaded and been updated. If I open this again, and I go to the next field, you see that nothing is showing here in terms of changes. But what has happened is it's noticed that I edited the code here. The old field plugin doesn't have this information about parameters and so on, but the code that I was playing around with in terms of editing has that information. So I have the option to load that particular code that I've already edited. So I can say load edited version, I can go right ahead and then reload. And now you can see that it's reloaded with the value of a dollar there. So what will happen from now on is if I go in here and I change this symbol, I'm doing this work in another place. And so I'm in Zambia, my symbol for currency is K. I can save this. If I upload this to, if I upload this to my server, If I upload that to my server, I can click on test. And if I go into my test now, I should be able to see, again, remember we have to reload the current version. So we load with that, say reload, and I'll see my K. This few plugin now is able to receive a parameter through my form definition and use it there. So I'm happy with the field plugin. I think it works the way it should work. I want to now formalize this particular field plugin. I will do this by going into my manifest.json and I will give it a name. Let's call this field plugin format symbol. And then the author durability, since it's me, it could be somebody else, but then I could also give it a version. This is my very first version. And so I'll call, I'll just put 0.0.0. .0 and then I will save this file. I will come here and save this file. I will come here and save this file. I'll come here and save this file. I've saved all my files. And then I will go into where these files are and I will zip these into and compress them into one folder and come here, compress, and then I'll give this a name. I want to call my field plugin 
format symbol. I think that's the name I gave it. And then dot field, dot zip. So basically what has happened is here is given my field plugin a name, which is format symbol. I've added this extension dot field plugin, which tells Service CTO that this is a field plugin and obviously dot zip because this is a zip folder. Then I will come and update my, my reference here also to reflect that. I will keep the custom because that tells the server that this is a field plugin, a custom appearance, and then I'll give it format symbol and I'll keep the K, the K for now. And I can come and I'll save this. I can come here and when I upload this with the new field plugin, I will not need to reload anything. So I can come here and then I can also select the new field plugin. It's got a different name. And then I can upload this to my server. It will essentially do the same thing, but now it's a file that I can share with my workmate somewhere else and they'll be able to get the same functionality. If they're working in a different country, they can just come here and they can just change the symbol to you see. Sometimes my currency is referred to as ZW, so I can save that and then I can upload this. So now I have a field plugin that adds a symbol, whatever symbol it is that I that I have that I've added. Let's check what this looks like. All right, it's got that symbol. I can add uh, whatever symbol it is, I'll be able to pass it as a parameter through the form. Uh, that's just one step in terms of customization. Um, you could use this same pay field plugin to, for example, represent percentages. Say I'm not dealing with currency, but I want it to represent percentages. With percentages, usually the symbol is at the end rather than at the start. If I'm dealing in percentages, I wouldn't have my symbol at the start here. I would have my symbol at the back here. What you could do is you can add another parameter, which you call placement, and that parameter will determine whether the symbol should be at the start or at the end, and you can pass that information to it. But we won't do that now. I think that sounds like something that would be good for an exercise. We'll circulate some details or steps that you can follow to make that change. I would encourage each one of us to give it a try. And basically, it will also circulate the answer. So hopefully you'll be able to get yourself playing around with the field plugin and making those different changes. So what have I shown in terms of making the field plugin? I've shown the template, which is about the structure. I've shown the styling, the style.css, which is about styling. I've shown the script.js, which is about the behavior and functionality, and the manifest.json. And by making changes to these, I've also been able to demonstrate that we have a quick way of you looking at what those changes turn out to be using this preview within the testing form. So if you are doing it any other way, you would have had to zip up the files, upload them, check whether they work correctly. If they don't, you download again, you make your changes, zip, upload, and so on and so forth. But using this test console makes it a lot easier. So hopefully you've got a sense of what the field plugin looks like, where the different parts are that are working together to actually make a field plugin work out. So for all of those field plugins, however complex they looked, this is their basic anatomy. They've got a template, which is about the structure. They've got a style, which is about the styling. They've got a script, which is about the behavior, and then a manifest, which gives us general information about them. So all the field plugins you'll be able to see have got this general structure. So back to our slides, we're almost at the end, and then we'll, uh, we'll take some questions. All I wanted to do in the last few minutes is just uh, firstly, point you to some useful links. In terms of information about the field plugins, if you go to our documentation, you will find a lot of information about field plugins. In our support center, uh, you saw that that's where I was able to search for our field plugin catalog. Uh, so you'll be able to find information there. Uh, most of the information is also open source. So we keep it on GitHub. So you can find all the different field plugins that we have created on GitHub. You can download them from there and you can make tweaks to them. We will post some links in the chat, which you can use to go to direct issues relating to few plugins, but there's a lot more information. In the links that we've posted, we've also pointed to some quick learning material on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, if you want to have a look at that. But there's so many courses out there that you can use to learn uh, to learn a bit about JavaScript. So that is designing uh, field plugins. I'm hoping that you have gotten something and I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. But before we get to our questions, I do just want to mention that we do have another webinar coming. This one will be uh, on the 7th of April. And basically, we'll be joined by ID Insight, who are a global advisory data analytics and research organization. Uh, they'll be speaking to us and sharing insights around planning and executing phone service. 
which are inclusive of female respondents. Pretty sure that you are all aware that uh, gender speech is a common source of bias. And so we need to learn how to be able to minimize this. So you can go to our blog at the end of this and you can register there and we'll be able to see you on the 7th of April. So do look out for that upcoming webinar. Mm-hmm.